What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It is the Canon Culture Podcast. Of course, you know your favorite inconsistently consistent podcast. I'm your host, Just Jay Sama, and of course, I'm here with producer Plank. Woo! And uh, we actually have a very special guest today, Mr. Era Nage. How you doing, sir? I'm doing fine. Just hey, chilling. Enjoying well, the night. Thank you okay. for showing. Thank you for showing up, man. Uh, I also I want to remind everybody if you are just now tuning into the podcast. Of course, there's a video version on YouTube.com/slash Canon Culture Pod, so you guys can look that up. We also have Patreon exclusive episodes now. So if you guys want to get some behind the scenes stuff, uh, where we're talking about you know some real raw, intense stuff that we can't talk about on the podcast. And I mean like. We're dropping names, talking shit, talking about how much money this person is making. All the shit that you guys want to know. Uh, listen, I know only three of you guys are going to even care about that Patreon, but we just want to let you know that it is there. Patreon.com slash Canon Culture. Uh, so with that yeah. said, let's go ahead and get into the video, man. Uh, Plank, how are you? I'm good. All right. All right. Uh, Arrow, I would ask how you are, but I, I'm going to be honest with you. Because you bought that Demon Slayer game, I don't care. <laughs> hey man it's fun that's all i can say oh man i i'm glad you're having a great time it's it's fun to watch it's super flashy so i i enjoy that plank got me watching a couple of your videos and we sat in the discord and watched them so Are you serious? yeah we watch your videos yeah oh shit i mean um, i don't comment because you know i don't like you like that but i mean uh, you know. oh yeah absolutely 100 <laughs> yeah, never I, I i don't want you getting a big head so are you the one <laughs> bro are you the one make uh putting dislikes on my shit I'll be seeing one oh, no, that like was me. That was me. <laughs> oh, that was... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was, I don't like you that much. I mean, you know, I just, so. You know. Yeah, I'll watch the video, but, you know, I have to leave a dislike. Humble it's just, you know. I, I guess. Yeah. yeah, just, you know, make sure you don't get a big hit. That's all it is. <laughs> but, uh, hey, guys, we have a very special episode for you guys today. So, uh, we're talking about some, uh, some inter interesting shit. Plank? Uh, I got this from like the first ten minutes. So, there's there's abs um, absolutely more context, but okay. So, this is very interesting. So, go ahead and explain it for uh, one more time, because I I feel like I need a little bit better understanding. So, you're saying there's I'm just gonna let you explain. I'm confused. <laughs> uh, it's basically. In the culture, right, in the in American culture, the hustle mindset or like the how successful do you want to be or where do you want to be and, and things like that is is so ingrained that we're sometimes we miss shit like we miss the littler shit is probably where uh, I would say this is to cut off most of that bullshit. Mm -hmm. But yeah, to keep a long story short. Okay. Uh, that 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 idea that we need to be moving at a thousand miles per hour to fame, success, and things that we kind of idealized. It uh, it's very I don't want to say toxic, but it's very straining. I'll say mentally straining because that they teach you that shit in school too. Oh, where do you want to be in five, ten years? Bitch, I don't know. I want to be alive, personally. Right. But this idea that you need to be moving towards, uh, th that you need to be moving at a thousand miles towards your goals and wealth and success, hmm. basically. Okay, maybe I maybe I'll have to like watch the full hour piece, but yeah, you don't have to. Watch. It's uh, they stopped talking about it at thirty one. Okay. So oh no, first... actually not thirty one. It's a. Uh, 27 okay so the first so roughly the first 30 minutes right 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 so yeah. from my understanding is uh being the age that i am this makes sense but it also doesn't make sense at the same time and i'll tell you why so just from the few parts that i was listening to uh he was saying there is no hustle and bustle cultural like ideal uh, idealized location. I don't think he was saying there is none of that I think to the extent that America has it so he there, verbatim, it is not he, the same like two minutes in he verbatim said well not two minutes six minutes and what is this somewhat he verbatim says we don't ha in the UK we don't have locations like New York City and Los Angeles that are you know constantly moving and built on hustle culture well, oh no, no 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 that's not what he meant by that okay well okay, he it, he was like uh, there are no places as like 
beautiful as it and not only that it's uh what is it he said it's not as accessible with what is it uh public transportation right right so either way uh that being said america is just built different bro uh we're we're indoctrined from an early age to you know and we're taught that if you work hard you get you get rewarded which obviously you know when you grow older that's not the case you know some people obviously work less and they make more and stuff like that not just necessarily yeah. monetarily but just overall like achieving your goals ish is is a form of success to some people so um everybody just has a an embedded nature as a human being to want to do more shit like every human does like every human at, at a certain level wants to feel happy every human at a certain level wants to feel successful every human uh, on a certain level you know some greater than others want to be idolized by others want to be seen as you know like uh, all of us do at, at a certain point no matter who you are even if it's just like a little like two percent of your being like some people could not care at all obviously but there's still just a little bit of people who publicize that type of stuff that want to be idolized by others oh that that guy doesn't care that guy doesn't care about being popular you know that's secretly what what we want it's 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 an embedded human nature so it's very interesting to me because some people just want to work hard some people just want better shit in life and some people just want to be at a better place which i would assume is majority of people they just want things that they don't have so Mm -hmm. in a in a country where it's really really embedded in you at an early age hey work hard work hard work hard go to college work hard work hard like that's just all we know and some people have it's become a cultural thing now because it's romanticized to do more things it's romanticized to have burnout as far as like you're working so hard all the time like you're constantly working 24 7 that's that's absolutely especially in the last couple of years with uh entrepreneurs becoming more and more famous and stuff like that and being co quote unquote content creators and in in a public light you know what i mean a lot of that stuff is being romanticized when in actuality not everybody needs to run their own business not everybody needs to be rich and famous not everybody needs any of this stuff but you want to try because you'll see people doing way better than you you'll have you know the jake and logan pauls you'll have all of these youtubers mr beast you know all of these movie stars actors and actresses and doing all this shit living life on the boat popping bottles champagne all blah 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 blah. you know whatever it is mm -hmm. uh rappers basketball players people who have an abundance of monetary resources not just resources in general who have reached a level of success that is idolized by others so therefore we're indoctrined to think hey if i work hard enough maybe i can get to that place so it's the same thing you know it, it's the same thing with kobe bryant for example the mob of mentality if i i have to win at, at all costs i'm gonna win so mm -hmm. you know I, it's it's unhealthy for some people to sustain and then in other places you know it's just not but then you also got to look at other countries and look at what is successful to them from their perspective in comparison to what is successful to us here in this location. I mean, we have the NBA, one of the biggest, yep. greatest hmm. organizations for organized sports at all, period. I don't know shit about UK basketball. I don't even I didn't even know people in Europe played basketball until I, I found out from uh, one of my cousins who used to play uh, in Amsterdam or some sh I, I don't even know that that's how like out of touch I am with like international sports and shit like that like I just don't mm. fucking care like and I think that comes to play in the people who built these organizations want it to be seen worldwide they want this influence worldwide it, which is another testament of how hard we work so it, yeah we're we're a society built on hustle culture I work harder than somebody else. I, you know, like, yeah, that should be romanticized. People should idolize that because the harder you work, the more work you put in, the more rewards you receive. Then other people see that and they want to work harder and blah, blah, blah. And so on and so forth down the chain. Obviously, the rewards, the rewards are various and, and different levels for different people. 
but that's just where we're at. So I don't, I don't even think like, like that perspective, like that idea of what success is in a different country is something I can even fucking vibe with because in other countries, they're probably just like, Hey, I just want to be comfortable. Like, I just want to, you know, have like a house, a wife, kids, blah, 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 whatever. But here in America, it's just like, yeah, I got to have a wife, but I also got to have a bad bitch on the side, big ass house, six cars, uh, uh, put, put my uh, fucking, I need a Tessie. I need a Lambo. I need a basketball court in my backyard just because I want to be yeah. able to do all these activities and have all of these things and have access to all of these things because they make me feel good. You know what I mean? Whereas in uh, yeah. other countries, they, they probably do. They probably do feel that way, but they also don't have the same things romanticized there that we do here. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, of course. Yeah, and the, once again, the NBA is a perfect example. You got ball players and rappers and all this other shit. They don't got all that in the UK. Like, every time I ever see, like, popular UK rappers, they're not, like, usually flexing and flossing the way that they do here in the States. You know? So. Yeah, I, yeah, I get that. But that's... But, but to your point, motherfuckers, motherfuckers in the U.S. love that shit. Yeah. No matter where it is. Exactly. They love motherfuckers uh, living their best life, you know, even if that may not be possible for them. Oh, yeah. It's it's absolutely like, I mean. Because not everyone could be famous. Yeah, it's it's the way. Not everyone can make reason. it. Yeah. So, so, honestly, in my opinion, I just think now that you, if someone realizes like or has something grounded in realism, it's, you know. That shit is boring. It is bo Yeah, it's very boring. It is extremely boring. Man, I'm trying to be on the boat popping bottles with ne with naked bitches everywhere, bro. I'm not trying to be fucking an accountant going home to my wife and and hanging out with my kids and shit. Fuck that. I'm trying to be on a on a on a on a 300 foot yacht, popping bottles and pouring champagne on naked bitches that I don't know and never gonna talk to again. Like, come on, man. Shit. <laughs> you think I? Hey. <laughs> Hey, who the fuck grows up to want to be an accountant? You know what I mean? Like, don't nobody want to do that shit. Man, I can't I can't uh, wait yeah. to grow up and have a steady job. Like, what the fuck? Get the fuck out of here, bro. I'm trying <laughs> to travel. I'm trying to fuck bitches and leave them in other countries. Like, I'm trying to do irresponsible shit. I'm trying to do shit that... that <laughs> for real. For real. <laughs> Big irresponsibility vibes, bro. I'm not... I'm not... Uh, I'm not trying to be responsible for shit. I don't want that fucking burden. I don't want that fucking stress, that anxiety, none of that shit. That shit don't belong to me. Let somebody else deal with that shit. So I'm trying to be a fucking multi-millionaire YouTube type nigga. You know what I mean? Like, I'm trying to get accused <clears throat> for sexual assault. Nah, I'm just playing. I'm <laughs> Yo. I'm trying to get accused for some shit that I did not fucking do and then just have enough money to just be like, okay, and? All right. About to do it again. Yeah, you know, accidentally kill somebody on a movie set and be like, my bad. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I bet. Yeah, don't nobody want normal shit. Who the fuck? Like, ugh. That shit is, that shit is pathetic if you ask me. Like, I'm not I, saying I don't that. think, I'm I don't think being wrong. stable is, stability is not pathetic. That shit is boring though. That's what <laughs> it, I'm saying. It's like, it's Well, it's boring like, to you. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. So in other countries, they probably don't see it as boring. They probably see it as like, Oh okay. Oh well, like, you made it. Yeah, you made it. Well, you it. have st you're st you're stable. You're, you know that's. Like, oh, for man. some people, that's enough. But I mean, I think in America, that's never it's never going to be enough to be uh to be a nine to five like you making forty k a year. Motherfuckers are about to clown on you. It is when you get older. When you get older and you realize like you spent all your twenties fucking off instead of working to get to that place. Because that's basically where I am now, which is why i started the whole other youtube channel and shit like that when you waste mm. your 20s just having fun and like learning shit like i mean most of the time it's not a waste to be honest with you like it's it's time that you used effectively you really don't get a slap in the face of hey it's time to be practical until you're about to hit 30 because then mm. you realize you're at the age of 30 if you spent 21 to 29 kind of like fucking off and not gaining experience in specific places and you're not goal oriented and stuff like that you're just living life as it comes to you like day by day i mean you're not necessarily fucking off and like going to the club every single weekend yeah I mean, a lot of people do do that but like 
you're not really like putting money aside. You're not thinking about a 401k. You're not thinking about developing a career into your 30s. You're not developing a craft. Like, well, at least most people. I mean, if you're in like yeah, New York course. or LA, you're most likely doing that anyway. But by the time you got here, you're you're already above mid 20s in the first place. But uh, with that being said, you kind of get closer to 30 and realize, shit, I have to do something stable because I didn't build something in my 20s. So it's it's kind of crazy because you wouldn't know that if you didn't have like a proper support system before your 20s. So you really have to start early in order to like get to a place of being young and rich at the same time. You know what I mean? Without yeah. having any type of like external help like your parents or, you know, just just getting extremely fucking lucky outside of being like in like ungodly talented. You know what I mean? So Yeah. It's it, it all of this stuff just kind of comes with the territory and as you get older you have to find new forms of practical success and practical flossing because going into my 30s now i'm looking at like fuck man i i i I, i'm too old to be like well i mean i can't say too old because that's probably 40 up but (laughs) i'm i'm too old to be in certain spaces anymore you know what i mean like i can't participate in the same uh spaces as people who are in their 20s who are just starting out somewhere and uh, basically like for a good example um the fact that i want to uh go into be like, an actor not just be an actor but say i wanted to do graphic design right so okay. oh, or and like learning like uh coding or something like that something really really sophisticated that takes long periods of time to learn so you now have people that are in their 20s 21 22 23 24 all right in that range okay. who are in college courses to participate in that certain field and those are the students that you those are the group of people that you're competing with at the age of 29 30 31 your brain does not process information the same way these younger 20 year olds are so even for example like you know acting you can no longer go out for a certain set of roles because you don't fit those roles, which are yeah. e- arguably the easiest to cast for. People in between the ages of 18 to 28 are the easiest people to cast because they fit into a wide range of, of like <laughs> age group, the way they yeah. look, the way they, they move, the way they perceive, the energy that they carry on cam on and off camera so some people you can't work with because hey you're 28 and we need somebody that looks 25 but you don't bring off 25 you look like you're fucking 28 because you are 28 bro like you didn't take care of your skin when you were 21 22 and so now look at you 28 looking 30 bro we can't cast you for this scene i'm sorry but that's the particular role where they're like we want to give this 25 year old we're looking for a 25 year old on set who can speak these specific lines, but you look 28. That role's not for you. So now you got to look yeah. for roles that are 28 and up <laughs> to fit into, which is doesn't come along very often because a lot... Which are usually extras, right? <clears throat> which are... Extras are, are any range. Extras can okay. be... there. Extras are... Uh, the definition of extras is just background talent. That's all. That's all you really are. Sometimes yeah. as an extra, you can get asked to do more. So the way the movie industry works is you have the Screen Actors Guild, which is SAG-AFTRA, right? So they're essentially the guild that, that gives you a stamp, like a little license that says, you are officially an actor and you cannot be paid below this specific amount. No matter what job you do, whether it's background work, whether you're speaking, whether you're bringing somebody a prop or anything like that, you cannot get paid below this section. So you're part of the union, right? When you're doing mm. non-union work, you're basically showing up to do whatever the DP, whatever the director, whatever the AP, any of these other people ask you to do. That's what your job is, to be background talent, sit around until we need you, you stand here, you do the things we tell you, and that's it. You have, there's a 99.999% chance that you will not receive a speaking role. Like, you will not speak. If you're a background actor, if you're an extra, you're probably not going to talk. Unless you have a certain look about you that says, hey, somebody was sick today, we need something to fill in. Or, hey, we had a sudden rewrite, which is all luck-based. 
But if you yeah. look the part, you happen to get lucky, you book enough work, you can get put in a position to where, hey, we need somebody who looks 25 wearing a green shirt and to, to say, how are you, to the main character in this scene. The second you, whether your background, whether you're extra, whether you're whatever, the second you say any words or do anything on screen, you are considered what's called a featured extra, which means you automatically get your SAG after a union card. Automatically. If you don't, okay. you have to book enough work and ask the DP, the AP, anybody else, any of the higher up people, the, the PAs, anything like that. You have to ask them on set, hey, can I get a SAG voucher? Some productions will have them. Some productions won't. You only need three SAG vouchers to become SAG eligible, which when you're SAG eligible, there's a $550 registration fee. And then after that, you're considered in the union. And then there's yearly dues after that. If you're automatically mm. thrusted into it, like if you have a speaking role or you're a featured extra, then you're automatically in it. Your first year is free and you don't pay dues. So when you're getting into a space where you're older and it becomes a lot harder to find these roles because they can always take somebody that's younger and age them up. They can't take somebody who's older and age them down without it costing them more money. Mm. So that's why, you know, actors get aged out and stuff like that. So when you're going into your 30s, there's a lot less opportunities for people that look like you compared to your early 20s where you could still pull off 18. You could pull a Degrassi, you could pull a, a Nickelodeon show, you could pull a Disney show where they need kids in high school, and you could be go from a featured extra to a side character really, really fast. Not only that, in that opportunity, every time you go on set, you need to be networking with not only networking up, but you need to be networking across with other actors. Because there are some people that are there that are unpaid. Because, I mean, most extras are always paid, but there are sometimes... Some people who show up to the set, they're not actors. They're just, they know somebody. Like, oh, my friend's the director of photography. And they were like, hey, we need extra people. So they invited me and my friend to come and show and just stand around. Mm. So wait a minute, wait, er, back up. You mean to tell me your friend is the DP on this movie? Oh yeah, you know, we've been friends for, since like the fourth grade. And he was just like, hey, I need a, I need a favor. We want to pay less people. Can you just come and fill in a spot? That is a person that you need to communicate with because that person will probably get you casted for something accidentally. Mm. So there are people who come to sets and all sorts of stuff that get paid for the day uh, that just show up because they know somebody. That happens all the time. That's how they save money. That is absolutely how the movie industry saves money. So you never know who you might speak to. You might speak to somebody who's like, you know, I, I remember the first time I did background work for like this one, this weird sitcom that Kat Dennings was on. I think it was like Two Broke Girls or something like that. And mm. I met this Asian girl who had moved out here from Missouri. And she was like, yeah, you know, I really wanted to come out here to be an actor. And my friend told me about this. And I was like, oh, OK, so are you like signed up with any agencies or anything like that? She's like, no, this is my first time. And they gave her a speaking role that day. I'm like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Time out, time out, time out. You mean to tell me I've been doing Damn. this for two years, right? You come out here. It's your first week. You're fresh from Missouri, wherever the fuck that is in the Midwest. And your friend gets you on a show, like on a CBS show. And your first day here, you get a speaking role? She's like, yeah, I've never done it before. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I, I've been doing this for a cool minute now. So, you know, it's just right place, right time. But you can't be in the right place, right time if you're not booked for stuff. So, I see. Yeah. But anyway, and that's part of, that's another part of like, you know, this whole hustle culture thing where like, you have to be booking something every single day. If you really want to do this, you need to be like determined to do something like make a new approach every single day because you won't, when you make it to the other side and you look back, you'll be glad you put in the work instead of being like, oh, well, I took... I worked on Monday, but I took Tuesday off. And then I worked Wednesday, but I took Thursday, Friday off. And then it was the weekend after that. So then I just started over on Monday. And then Monday it rained. So it's just like, it was kind of a bad day anyway. So then I started Tuesday. So then in a the course of two weeks, you only worked four or five days at like a specific craft. <clears throat> you want this to be your life, which is why I kind of like, 
talk so like I talk down on myself like when it comes to creating content and stuff like that because I tell myself every single morning like I don't want to go to work like I don't want to go to this fucking job I really don't yeah but the but you gotta you gotta hustle to keep the lights on exactly in both and, ways and, and exactly and then when given the opportunity <clears throat> to make content for a living you know like when the start of the pandemic happened and I just had like plenty of money saved up already. And then I was getting unemployment and then my job let me go and blah, 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 all this other stuff. I sat on my ass for four months before I was, you know, I ended up moving to this place. I sat on my ass for four months and probably only made like six videos. How the fuck mm. do you go four months every single day talking about, I want to be a content creator. I want to be a content creator. I want to be a content creator and then make no content. I remember I was there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, like so you know and as i get older i feel like there's a certain part of the internet that just absolutely will not fuck with me because of my age as a bias that they don't even know is a bias yet they'll just be like oh mm. well who's this guy so now i've started to think this guy's not in his yeah, fucking early 20s yeah no just like i can't really relate to this guy like i like what he's saying but uh there's just something about like obviously you know we see people we on the internet and where we develop a parasocial relationship with that person oh i hate like, those yeah it's weird it's just kind of like that becomes your usual person that you see i guess you could say like yeah even though i've never met phil phil defranco like if i ever like win a day without watching his videos i feel like i'm not informed on the news and stuff like that so i now have be developed a uh what is it? a dependence on this person like, oh, shit, Phil didn't upload today? Like, damn, I hope he's okay. I don't even fucking know this guy. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? So, you know, it's... um, And Phil really only got to where he is because of working every single day. That's just part of who we are as a culture. If you're not working every single day, it's like, did you really want the thing that you're trying to reach? Like, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, it's cool to take days off for sure, but did you really want it? I suppose that's a that's an interesting thing right like is it is it more human or is it more the culture i guess right is it more human to want to continue to progress or is it more like our surroundings are forcing us to be like work 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 conform 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 uh, i feel like that's just a united states thing i also will say that if you don't work 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 the lights might not be on so that's that also is true thing yeah we're also you know like extremely extremely underpaid for having the highest cost of living ever in the history of ever you know what i mean like yeah, at one course. point in time like i remember when i got my first job i i was making like 725 an hour was like a, a high rate like you could afford an apartment in la working 40 hours a week at 725 an hour like that's not now, with the, now with the money i make i make 20 dollars an hour at my job right working 80 hours a week plus mileage plus gas plus expenses right and i still can barely afford this 1300 dollar apartment that you guys have seen in the back is the size of one person's living room i don't have any i don't have a full kitchen i don't have like a full bedroom i don't have nothing and i'm paying almost 1400 dollars for this place like it's it's Help. fucking insane so yeah and, that's crazy but then a lot of people like to push back and they'd be like well jared jay you live in you live in la like it's gonna be expensive but also we get paid more here on the average for less educated people we get paid more here than in texas in florida in all of these other places our cost of living is higher but our earning potential is way higher there's not a single job that i've heard of that's under like 15 dollars an hour at this point like it's just not like most places are already offering 13 14 15 dollars an hour plus like other benefits and stuff like that and because i work for a smaller company they're just like yeah we want you to to be the head of this department we just need you to work with us and then so when i ask for more money we don't i know we don't have it i'm responsible for the marketing i know we don't have the budget for certain things so it's like what do i do I got to get up and I got to leave this country to go, uh, this company to go to another job that's not going to give a fuck about me. That is going to give me like 401k and benefits and stuff like that. But they're also not going to allow me the time and space to like leave in the middle of the day to create content and then come back to work if I wanted to. My bosses let me do that. 
Like, yeah. like during the, the state of play or the, no, that's this week. Uh, during the PlayStation showcase, I told my boss, I was like, can I go home? I need to make YouTube videos. He's like, yeah, sure. Just work from home for the rest of the day. Like, because I'm, I'm, I'm considered a higher up at this smaller company. They were, they rely on me to develop certain things for their clients. And I'm responsible for that. At another place where I just become a wheel in the, in the system, you know, a cog in the, in the system, basically, it's just kind of yep. like, uh, okay. So now I have to trade either the ability to be comfortable and, and, and work towards something and like hustle, or I get a higher paying job where I'm making $40 an hour, but I'm working 80 hours a week and they, they expect so much of me and giving me nothing where I just feel like I'm like constantly working or maybe I could get a second job. But if I get a second job, then I can't. There is no YouTube. There is no YouTube. None. There ba there's barely a podcast right now just because I'm trying to, like, establish a, a work, content, and social balance. And it does not work. And for the past, like, seven years of my channel, that's why my relationship was shit. Because I couldn't attend to that because I was too busy trying to make YouTube videos that ended up turning out to be not very good in the first place. Because here I am with almost nothing to show for it you know what i mean like yeah so i mean i don't think they're bad videos i just think oh no no, no we're not, we're we're not, not gonna we're not gonna debate the the quality of the videos i'm saying they're bad oh, because, okay. because i'm only at 7k like how you okay you, yeah, yeah i get which I, that's what i yeah, that's what i was yeah, gonna yeah. say in comparison to somebody who starts up a tiktok tonight and then they'll have like ten thousand followers on their youtube channel by tomorrow you know what i mean like for not posting yeah. content consistently and stuff like that so it's just kind of you we have to have that like hustle culture because we're looking at you know our environments and we're a factor of it so we have to work hard in order to continue to live in certain places i'm sure there's probably somebody rolling their eyes right now listening to what the fuck i'm saying like oh well if you just move to a different place and blah 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 well y'all make ten dollars an hour there I, I, ain't no way i'm living off of ten dollars an hour like what the fuck <laughs> fuck i look like I mean, you could always work at a, a fucking packing company and get 14. That's cool. Why would you do that? Why He's already that? making 20. He I mean, no, no, that he no, makes no. More money. No, but like you, he makes 20, but it's still like if you round it down to like if you do that same shit for a different place, it's going to be less money, but the cost of living is also less. So it just evens out. Keep in, keep in mind, Arrow, I'm, okay. also, I'm also an actor and a voice actor and my talent agency is here in L.A. That makes so, sense. so when I go, you, you to, have a reason to stay. Exactly. So when I go to Not, bookings, they're like, oh, it's going to be at the Universal lot. It's going to be at the Melrose lot. It's going to be at this lot. It's going to be at that lot. Um, unless not I only to, that, like, but Atlanta just move or, forehead is a crazy kind of like argument for that because it's like, I was born here. Why would I exactly, move? I don't yeah, have it, any yeah, reason it, to move. Yeah. It makes sense. The just move you don't, forehead you don't shit is You really don't want to move because literally your family, friends, Everything is everything you just know and grew up with is where you. It's where you're born. It's like yeah, it's where it. it's where you're at. Why would you want to move from a place where you were born and know everything, and then go so, to a place you don't know? Right. So I was actually talking to my girlfriend about this today, and um, we kind of got into it a little bit because you know she has like this opinion that California is a very expensive expensive place to live. Yes, but keep in mind boys she makes almost a hundred thousand dollars a year <laughs> so what do, yeah do the math here so her parents have allowed her to live in their house like her parents have just you know like she just lives there no no paying rent there no paying rent you know like she has an agreement with her nice. parents they're like yeah, yeah. and her parents are very like upper educated people as well right and so like her mom is in tech and her dad is like uh he's something with amazon it's like it, it's it's like one of the higher ups or something like that like something for logistics or whatever so they make very mm. good money right but they're, yeah. they're very far from like oh spoiled and like you know, uh, they're, they're like stuff like that you know like uh the mid mid tier yeah right? yeah they're, like middle mid like mi middle mid class you know what i mean mm. like like they're making like they have enough to live but they're not like not up to not where, wealthy uh, they can... but very well off yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. They, can, they can see the bottom but you know they're just nowhere near it <laughs> like you know yeah. what i mean like 
Like so, they're on a very high cliff or so, a decent sized cliff. So she's she's kind of grappling with wanting to go to law school out of state and like all this other stuff, which we had gotten into. And we were also talking about. She's like, "Yeah, I if I could, I would move out of California." And I was like, "Well, why would you want to why do that? You, you actually yeah. can afford the cost of living here." And her, her like vision of thinking is just so weird to me because also today she was talking about she didn't want to buy a desk from ikea because the desk that she has at home is fine and i'm like yo you realize this is thinking from like 1955 right like like you you sound like you're 52 years old just because and her excuse was well you know it's sturdy i'm like Bitch, this thing is ugly. Like, what the fuck? Like, like this is Yo, ugly have... shit. Like, it's it's big, it's bulky, it's heavy for no reason. Talking about oh, um, but it's big. You can't find, and it's made of wood and blah blah blah. Uh, bro, I went on Amazon and found a ninety dollar desk that was bigger than the desk that she had, <laughs> that had way more storage space. And she was like, okay, you might have a point. I'm like, bro, this antiquated level. Like, I don't know who romanticized like thinking that just because something isn't broke, don't fix it. Like. Brad, get the fuck out of I'm here. Not, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I'm exactly like that, but only if it's what's it called? Technology. Mm. If it's technology, I'm like, okay, I'm not. I'm not gonna change this because it still works. Like my old, my old phone. I still have it. It works. It still works. You can charge on everything. I just decided at a certain point. I was like, I'm tired of this. So <laughs> when it says getting annoying, right? And I was trying to tell her, I was like, this is a quality of life update. Like I was telling her when I moved to this apartment, even though I could have kept my old desk, I threw that shit out. You know why? Because keeping old things will keep you in an old mindset. If by getting new mm. things or feeling like you need to get new things, you feel like you have to earn them. So I was like, damn, I have five monitors, right? And I have this mm-hmm. old ass monitor stand that Anthony gave me. I don't, I, mm-hmm. I don't like this shit. So I threw that out and that forced me to have to like buy a new one and realize, oh shit, since I'm updating technology, I need new monitors anyway. My monitors are going out. Like, yeah, I have five of them, but two of them are kind of kind of rusty, dusty. So I threw those out and bought two new ones. And I was like, okay, well now I got two monitors on a new, on a new mount. Let me get a new desk. The desk was like 60 bucks or whatever. Cool. Spent the money on the desk. Oh shit. I need, I need new speakers but I also have like my mixer and stuff like that, you know? So it was like certain things that I knew I needed to update because when I come home, it's a level of like, how comfortable am I when I'm at home? And I only spend maybe 30% of my life at home because I'm out being socializing or I'm at work. I spend majority of my life at work. You know Mm. what I mean? So it's like, how much of that do I need to change the quality of life at home? So that way I don't have to think about work. I didn't need a couch in my apartment. For what? My apartment is 10 feet by 10 feet. What the fuck I need a couch for? There's no fucking room in here for a couch. But when I spent the 200 bucks on Amazon to have the couch shipped here and I opened it on stream and I set it up and shit like that, bro, that was probably one of the best piece of content I have ever made. And now I love this fucking couch. You know what I mean? So, you know, now I can sit here and play my fucking PS5 comfortably. So then I'm not thinking about all the other shit, all the other hustle and grind I have to do. I'm not thinking about none of that shit. I'm too busy enjoying Resident Evil 8 on my PlayStation 5 with my fucking Bluetooth headphones on, bro. Because I got them for a deal. You know what I mean? Like, I got them for 100 bucks. They are originally 300 Like, come on, man. Like, I-, I need to be in a place of comfort because I'm-, I'm moving all the time to try and do better at life. I bought a new microphone. It comes in this week. I'm about to be doing my voiceover shit, bro. I'm about to be doing these video games and these commercials and shit like that. I'm about to shoot for whatever the fuck I can. So that way I can get a bigger apartment and a new camera and all this other stuff. So I can actually make content that I feel proud of. You know why I really don't like my content? Because when I make it, I'm in a place of discomfort. I'm very uncomfortable when I'm making a video. Very, very uncomfortable. And it comes off that way in videos. Other people may not see that because like the way I edit and shit like that, I'm not even comfortable during live streams. Like the only time I'm really comfortable is when we're doing a podcast and I don't have to have my camera on and I'm not expected to like look good or feel good because I could just sit here and talk shit. You know what I mean? I feel that. I'm more comfortable sitting and talking shit behind a microphone than I am to be in front of a camera. 
which actually Look cameras. Yeah, which actually was a real hindrance when I was 17 trying to be an actor. I was just like, uh, but I like to talk. If they're not giving me talking roles and I'm not exactly like the best looking person in the world, I'm like a little bit above average, if anything. And I have like a certain look that is castable. I'm a good looking black guy with glasses. Like that's like, shit, we need to, when it comes to casting and stuff like that, the more generic but unique you look is makes it easier to pick you out for stuff. So I was like, damn. Like, I was booking stuff when in my 20s, no problem. Like, and at the time, I was dating my ex. And she was like, damn, like, you're really, like, booking shit. Which made her go out and do things. And now she's, uh, although she's in a completely different predica predicament because she's one of the lead promoters for the, uh, for the Laugh Factory here, here in Hollywood. She's, like, the promoter. So she books the talent and all this other stuff. How do you think it feels to be a comedian that's her ex-boyfriend? You think I'm getting booked? At the at the laugh factory anytime soon? Fuck no. Hell Fuck no. no. Absolutely not. I better take my ass down there to with Joe Rogan <clears throat> at the comedy store. Shit. Hey. Better than nothing. Uh, hey man, you know. If they let me in the fucking door. Like <laughs> So, you know, it's just like I, I have to hustle in order to overcome a lot of these barriers that I have psychologically put on myself. If you're not in a place of comfort, you can't perform the best you can. You know what I mean? Like, like yeah, I built my microphone. It's a pretty good microphone. It's it's like, it use, uses the parts from a Shure SM57. Cool, no problem. Is that gonna stop me from ordering this SM7B that's coming in, this $400 microphone that I got a deal on? Shit. Slide the motherfucker no. through here, bro. I could do a lot more work if I feel a lot more comfortable with with my mic. Mm -hmm. I could do a lot more work by upgrading my my PC and my rig because I feel more comfortable to do so. So if it's and sometimes if you got to go through a little bit of discomfort to get to a place of comfort, so be it. But you have to find out what your operating level is. I have mm. found, I, you know, I I've reached my operating level. Yeah, I'm I'm uncomfortable living in LA chasing a dream that you can only get in LA. I was born and raised here, bro. I have I have manifest destiny. Manifest destiny. I have first dibs. Think, think of all the people that had to reach 18, 19, 20 to fly out here with nothing in their pockets to try and develop something. You know what I mean? And then think of all the people that had to wait till they're 18, 19, 20 to use their parents' money to come out here to pay for an apartment, and, the, and their parents are paying for their apartment so they can be a quote-unquote actor and then move back to the Midwest and they realize they can't cut it. Or they end up working at Chipotle fucking up my burrito on my lunch break. Wow. You see what I mean? Like, now you're making me uncomfortable in my place of comfort, you know what I mean? Like, like that shit is rough. That shit is rough. But it's a reality that we live in. Dude came out yeah. here from Kansas or whatever the fuck, and his parents were like, okay, we'll pay for your rent for a year, but you have to get to work. You have to do something. He comes here and he fucks off. Or he comes here and 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 and, and not necessarily makes it. And here's the thing. Here's the thing I, I, I need to, like, urge that I want to talk about on my new YouTube channel, too, uh, which I'm starting this week, so you guys can expect win videos by Wednesday. They're going to be unedited, so it's a lot easier to get those videos out. Um... What's interesting is to be an actor, you don't have to be famous. You can be what's called a working actor. So essentially what that is, is you get booked on enough stuff per week, per month, per year in order to make $40,000. It's really mm -hmm. not that hard. It's really, really not that hard. You can do that doing background work. There's literally services that will call you every single day at 6 a.m. Hey, this show is taping. Can you come in? We'll give you $200 for the day. Sure. Click. Be there by eight. You drive down to the Grove to, to go to the CBS studios. They give you a little parking pass. You sit in the audience and watch fucking The Price is Right or Jeopardy or Wheel of Fortune or whatever the fuck they're filming that day, right? Or some little sitcom. They give you a $200 check on the way out. Boom. That's your work day. Next day, 6 a.m., another phone ring. Hey, this show is taping at Fox Studio over in, over in Culver City. Bet. Be there by eight. Click. $250 for the day. You could do that Monday through Friday and just be a working actor. You work seven, eight hours a day. 
just sitting, just chilling. You could bring your laptop. You could work on whatever the fuck you need to work on. But it's possible. It's absolutely possible. So, God forbid, you show up somewhere and they're like, hey, we need one of our extras to bring this coffee from off, off screen. We need you to, to, and then they'll kind of like look at you. We need somebody with a bright, bright, solid colored shirt. What about you in the red shirt? And that's you from Kansas. We just need you to come in. You don't have to say anything. Just come in, put it on the table. And that's it. And then walk away. And then, so you do it a couple of times. They'll do a couple of takes. And the director goes, no, nah, we don't really like it. Um, when you come in, you bring the coffee. Can you say, uh, here you go, sir. Here's your order or something like that. Something that's completely not even on the script. And you're like, yeah, sure. No All problem. Right. Yeah, me, yeah, okay. Let me do this. <laughs> so you come in. You set the thing down. Here you go, sir. Here's your order. Boom. And you're out. They wrap for the day. You know what that, you know what that just did? The DP now has to come to you and say, okay, so what's your name? Let's write this information down. Here you go. Here's your union card. Make sure to register that by the end of the day. Here's your $300 check for the day. And here's $150 extra because you had a speaking role. You had just showed up as a dude with a red shirt on to just make $100 for the day. And you made three times the money. And now you're a union member, which means you cannot be paid lower than a certain amount. And then usually those rates depend on how much acting experience you have. So, you know, this is mm. your first year. You can't be paid lower than, let's say, $490 per day. Because you're a because you're a union member now for a whole year. Keep in mind, you've only <laughs> been out here for a week, and you've already made way more money than somebody who has been trying to do this for their entire life. You know what I mean? And so, mm. so sometimes that happens. That will fucking happen. So your dues are paid for an entire year. So every time you go and you book something, and they pay you your four hundred ninety dollars for you to leave that day right you yeah. don't have to pay the union dues which are extremely high at the beginning and so you're like damn like i don't gotta work fast food i don't gotta do nothing i just show up 500 bucks for the day boom no problem think of all the opportunities Dang. you can now do on the weekends you know if you do, if you decide you don't want to pick up the phone call one day when they call you at 6 a.m they're called calling services by the way which you can register there's tons of them for free and they will do this for you every single morning say you decide not to take a 6 a.m call it's monday uh, you know i got 1500 in the bank i i will i worked three days last week i got 1500 in the bank man i'm good i'm gonna work three more days this week i'm gonna work wednesday thursday and friday pay the rent i'll be good to go rent by the way in a studio apartment that's the size of my apartment is fourteen hundred dollars Mm -hmm. that's three so days good. of work you good that's three days of work for you and you decide to get Netflix Hulu you say I'm gonna buy a couch I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do that good. blah 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 blah, blah. Uh, hold yeah, up three yeah, days bro? yeah you, you feeling it you really feeling it no I'm saying I'll probably do a little extra see, you see oh I mean? you got a hundred dollars and you doing a little extra and okay. you doing extra oh shit you got money left over and you're able to do extra oh shit here we can't go relate here. I'm can't fucking relate. poor yup can't relate so, I'm poor. Nope. Can't even afford. Are you to pay laughing? Attention, but that's real shit. Yeah, <laughs> I really am poor. Yeah, can't even afford to pay attention, man. This shit is ridiculous. So, that, so these are scenarios that do happen to where you become a working actor. You don't even have to be famous, bro. Famous is literally like, like a fucking star exploding only for you. Out of the billions that exist. You know what I mean? Like that doesn't that isn't feasible. So if you plan so, for the if you plan for the practical, you'll be ready for the, when the shit explodes for you because it it does it, when you're in this business long enough, you will get some type of spark somewhere. It may not be like a big break to where you're on a movie set and like you have tons of lines and you're a famous actor blah 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 blah. Sometimes it's just a little part in like small a, things that count very very small things because some people will see that another casting director will see you 
and be like, and like yeah, well, that guy's kind of good. Yes, you know? yeah, I want this person in something. Sometimes you'll yeah. even be a background person. The the one of the first pieces of background work I ever did was on Issa Rae's Insecure, right? So I did that, and I was literally just somebody at a bar in the background, just just sitting there. And they ended up calling me back for three different episodes, the same show, just because <laughs> I looked like somebody that would not be in a place like that. So it clearly meant I was like, I think they were at like this high end bar or something like that. And they had mm -hmm. nobody that looked like a nerdy black guy that was there. They were like, this dude, they came up with, yo, I remember the motherfucker, the, the motherfucker came up with this whole thing. Okay, we're going to need you to put this vest on and, 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 you know, you obviously got to sit with a lot of swagger, swirl your drink around. Like you got a whiskey swagger. on the rocks. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, huh? Okay. And she, she was telling me, she's like, yeah, you're pretending you're like a tech mogul or something like that. Like, and you don't fuck with nobody in here. And I was like, all right, bet. And that was the first time I've ever did anything. And I'm just swirling this drink around, just laughing, you know, and like pretending to be in this scene or whatever. And that made them call me for a second episode. And I play, and you know what? They were like, hey, you're going to be in this bookstore and we need you to like, you know, rummage around through some books and then you drop them. And you're like extremely upset about it. And I was like, all right, bet. Cool. No problem. Can I be like, can I be in the, in this section or can I, like, what can I do? Like, and I didn't have no lines, none. And they ended up calling me back for a third episode. And they were like, okay, so in this one, you're going to be at a pool party and you're clearly just like not vibing with the girl that's talking to you. So you kind of got like a stank face. And I was like, all right, bet, bet, bet. Can I get like a prop or something? Am I smoking? Am I drinking? And they were like, we can give you a water bottle. Can you make a water bottle work? And I was like, yeah, for sure. So in the scene, yeah, in the scene, <laughs> This girl was pretending to talk to me or whatever, and she like tells a she like tells a joke, and I pretend to fake laugh, and I'm like biting the top of my bottle cap, and so the lady comes over, she goes, "What you're doing is perfect. We're just gonna get you a prettier girl to stand next to." And I was like, "Bet!" <laughs> I was like, "All right, bet. Let's That's go, so bet. Cool, bet." And guess what? That was so that was cool. like that was like my eighth <laughs> shoot I had ever done in my acting career, right? And I was like, "Damn, like I can't believe I'm getting paid three hundred dollars to fake laugh at a pretty girl's jokes, right?" And then, so after that, I probably booked maybe three or four more different shows with that same casting person that, that got to know me, right? And then the girl from that pool party scene ended up wanting to run lines with me. <laughs> like we ended up chopping it up while, you know, like, while, you know, we were on set or whatever. And um, that was the girl I told you about who, uh, I told you guys about who the, the sex was whack. And she had, oh. she had, a, yeah, she had the fluffy dog. And I was like, man, I really only came over to her place for a dog, bro. Like, like I really just wanted to play with her dog. That's it. And she got me so fucking high and drunk off my ass, bro. Like, I passed out. And when I woke up, she was on top of me. And I was like, huh? Am I being raped right now? What the fuck? Like, this is crazy. I can't believe this is happening to me. Like, it's just, it's crazy, man. So you'll be in situations like that. And that was just me being me you know what i mean getting lucky imagine hmm. if i would have like stayed doing that stayed on top of like my casting calls and things like that and make sure and make making sure to call my agent back and all of this other stuff like if i would have just stayed on top of that i would have been good but the thing that fucked me up was trying to be a fucking youtuber at the same time and trying hmm. to and trying to harvest a working a, a non- working relationship at that time because me and my ex were split at that time and i was like you know what i'm gonna get in my bag i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that like watch she gonna be she gonna be upset she missed the train right and so i was working and she was noticing that i was working all the time and so i was like oh yeah 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 all, all this hard work will get her to come back you, Which, i feel like you were doing everything out of spite I was, but did that not put me in a place where I was on track to be successful? Yeah, you were. I wanted to exactly. So if you if you move, <laughs> I mean, who cares, right? Who cares, right? If you get to the destination, who cares what your motivation was, right? If you get to where yeah. you want to be, who cares how you got there? That is true. Nobody cares about the emotion it took. Like, like you think Kobe Bryant wanted to at at any point in time? He was just like, damn, I'm tired of shooting basketballs. Hell fucking no. He said, I got a place to be. I'm trying to be the greatest of all time. I don't care what the fucking motivation is as long as I'm motivated to get to the place where I wanted to go. So, mm. and then what ended up happening was she and I started to get back together. I was falling on the YouTube stuff. I was falling on the acting stuff. 
And when you don't work as an actor, you don't make any money, which means you got to get a day job. Zero. You got to get a day job. So I ended up getting a day job that I didn't like and then was complaining that the job was making me too tired to come home and make YouTube videos. Because when I go home and make YouTube videos, I can't spend time with my fucking girlfriend that needs this attention. This mm, woman honestly, needed, it might have been a bad idea. For it me, was a but... bad idea, right? <laughs> so the, I, me knowing that this woman's love language is communication, touching, spending time with her, quality time, and she wasn't into video games. So it's not like we could sit on the couch and bond while watching, while she's watching me play Resident Evil or fucking uh, whatever the fuck I was playing, or The Last of Us or anything, or whatever the fuck I was playing at the time, right? So I can't give this, I can't give my work the attention it needs because it drains me i can't give my youtube the attention it needs because i'm already drained and because i'm upset about these two things i can't harvest and nurture this relationship i'm supposed to take care of so this so when we talk about like to bring this back when we talk about this hustle culture if you're not in the mindset in your early 20s of trying to establish balance and having the discipline to say no to shit and knowing when you should do stuff when you should not do stuff by the time you're 30 you'd be set i'm just now learning these disciplines and boundaries but i'm already 30. yeah but it's too late it's too late well, not too late but... All of, i mean it's not of course it's not because you know fucking morgan freeman didn't get his first like like hardcore like hey i'm an actor now like his big acting check till he was 41. You know what I mean? Mm. So mm -hmm. Oprah Winfrey didn't get her show until she was 30. So That's it's like, still going. Exactly. You see what I mean? That bitch a billionaire. She out here balling. <laughs> you see what I mean? So okay. it's it's really like there's a bad trade-off to everything. And if if you guys or anyone else that is listening to this gets anything from what the fuck I'm saying, it's to take your life very seriously. Take every moment very seriously because yes, it's it's great to have fun and go out on the weekends and spend money with your friends and stuff like that, but please make sure to think of your future self and give that motherfucker $5 every now and then. Just a little bit. I swear to God, bro. If I would have taken some of the money that I had spent on the dumbest shit and just <laughs> kept, just kept $5 of it a month, from when I was 21 up until now, I promise you I would not be in this itty bitty ass apartment. Because what that does is not only do you save money, but you establish discipline. You establish like, hey, I am so hardcore in my own mind. I'm such a badass in my own fucking mind. I can make only $500 for the week and set $5 aside for this, $5 aside for that. I'm so badass mm. I can fucking do that. I don't even need that five dollars. Let that let that five dollars sit there. And for years it's just racking up, racking up, racking up, right? And say you put mm. more you put ten dollars sometimes, sometimes you'll put five dollars, ten dollars, twenty dollars. One time you put a hundred because you were like, oh shit, I just got paid. I I'm got mad to, money. I, bro. I got Come mad on. money, bro. I got so much money, I'm gonna put a hundred dollars in that savings. Boom. Like it's nothing. By the time you hit twenty nine and and twenty nine point nine years old, <laughs> which is where I'm at. And you're just like, fuck, man, I need some emergency money. Like, I got nothing in the bank this week. This is this is real right now. I can show you guys what's in my bank account. And I have to make it until November 1st from right now before I get paid again. And you'd be like, Jay, how the fuck are you going to survive on this? And I've done it last month. I did it the month before that. I did it the month before that. I did it the year before that. I was doing that shit that when I lived. That's when you're about to be hitting yeah, different. Bruh. I was doing that type of shit when I lived with Heavenly. Okay? That's how? how that's how long bro. This man was was so confused. When I explained to him what my Uber, Lyft, and DoorDash days were like, he was like, Jay, can I just hire you to be my editor and just give you a hundred dollars a day to make my videos? And I was like, No, because how would I make my videos? And he goes, Well, obviously I would help you, this, that, and the other thing. And because I was so young in that moment. I was so filled with pride in telling, instead of telling this man, yes, and he definitely would have helped me at the time. You should have just fucking, oh my God, I would have yeah. fucking took that shit in a heartbeat. He because like to, to make every you're, you're single video to, with me and everything. Yeah. So you were, you were be able to edit his shit at the same time as, as you were doing your stuff. And he would and help wouldn't me have promote to work. it. Yeah. And this was at the time where me and Long Beach Griffey were cool. Fucking me and I'm Dante were cool. 
me and Afro was talking on a regular basis. You see what I mean? Like, th this was a perfect storm of, like, Jay, this is your moment. That, that, that was the time that to was the, say yes, yes dog. That was, <laughs> that was my time. So you remember when I was giving the example of the working actor, right? Where you wore the red mm -hmm. t-shirt and they gave you a speaking line and now you make yes. $400 instead of 100 That was my moment of somebody taking me and saying, hey, here's your chance to be union. Here's your chance to make more money. And because I was so prideful, I was like, no, I can do it on my own. And here I am with Yo, if, with less subscribers now. I have less subscribers now than when he moved out of our house. Mm. Fucking insanity. <laughs> Absolute insanity. So, you know, I can only make the best decisions <laughs> with the information that I have at the time. And this is why I tell men everywhere, if you are... If you hold any type of pride for yourself, you will not allow yourself to fail. Yes, true. But do not let that pride be the thing that makes you fail. Because best believe, yeah, I have my own place. Yeah, I make a couple thousand dollars a month. Yeah, sure. But if you make $3,100 a month and you got $2,400 in bills, yeah, you're not doing so great, are you? You really not barely coming positive barely and you really don't because you have to pay back credit cards that you fucked up in your early 20s you gotta pay uh, well, a student I don't loan use debt. credit yeah you, you gotta pay student <laughs> loan debt you gotta the worst part because you fucked off you have to pay a seventeen thousand dollar bill on a car that got repoed that you not only bailed out of repo that's your best friend at the time a famous youtuber bailed you out not just once but twice gave you two thousand dollars that said and then said catch up on your car note and get the fuck back to work make these fucking videos but you didn't but you didn't one of your best fucking friends who is making thousands tens of thousands hundreds of thousands of dollars a year told you to do something and you decided to let your pride get in the way bruh i have no sympathy for that nigga and that nigga is me. I have none. <laughs> I am niggas. <laughs> okay? Yeah. I just... I can't... I, fucking wild. Absolutely fucking wild. So... Mm. So that, yeah. That hustle culture is important. That hustle culture is the thing that helps you develop and go forward. Otherwise, you regress and you go backwards. And then by the time you're 30, you regret that you didn't. It's different in other countries where the worst case scenario quote unquote is not borderline homelessness it's not borderline i'm having sleep for dinner you know what i mean like that's just not that's not there because their society isn't built on that their society in other countries is not built on squeezing every single second of a human's day out of them every single ounce of their blood sweat tears and soul so best believe if i had the mentality that i have now and i lived in somewhere like australia crikey i'd be fucking bowling i would yeah. i'd be fucking bowling <laughs> <laughs> so you know but it is what it is man we can only make the best decisions that we can and now because of all that other stuff i am traumatized and I was telling Plank about this the other day. I'm I'm so traumatized. I can't even connect to this girl that I'm dating because of my previous trauma. Uh, I can't even establish a proper relationship where we talked about it today. And she was talking about, you know. Are you talking about that, uh, that girl that's so understanding? Yes, her. No, so, I like that person. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She's great. She's fucking amazing. Like, she's one of the greatest people I've ever met in my entire fucking life. But here's the problem. We were talking about, like, you know, the future of our relationship and stuff like that. And she obviously has the idea that we would live together. I told her, I can't live with you until you've at least, we've been together for at least a year. And you've lived on your own for at least a year. And so she was looking at me crazy, like, what? Like, we, we have a relationship, like, we're, you know, supposed to progress in a certain way. And the only reason why I put these stipulations in the way is because I didn't allow my ex to do the shit that she needed to do. So then mm. my ex got to a point where she was like, 
I wasted she my was entire saying, 20s on you. She was just doing things. She was just doing shit. Yeah. So if I don't allow my partner to have that space to do that, my, they're not going to allow me to have the space. And not only that, I need an out. At this point, I have so much trauma with, with both occupations and like my relationships and stuff like that. I have to be prepared to jump ship at any moment, any time. If I even, and I've even explained this to her, I was like, if, if, I, if I even have an ounce of just like, you're not like on the same page as me, I'm a dip. Like we've only had like three arguments and every single time I told her, you know what the ultimatum is? I leave, I leave this conversation, I leave this relationship, no problem to me. Our feelings I, gonna be hurt? Yeah, sure, but what else can I do? Because at any moment, if she decided she didn't wanna be with me, I just gotta take that L, right? Mm. When somebody makes their mind up, you just, what are you going to do? Fight them? Yeah, bitch, I want to be with you, so I'm going to fist fight you. Put your fucking hands up. You ain't going nowhere. Put your fucking hands up. Like, what the fuck? Like, what? What am I supposed to say? And my idea of trying to convince another human to spend time with me is the most ridiculous shit in the world to me. It's the most, mm. it's, it's fucking <laughs> the audacity to think I'm so entitled that I have ownership over this other person's time. That's the most ridiculous shit ever, 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 ever. You felt like you needed to make the decision. You need to go ahead and get the fuck out of here then. That's it. If you want to come back, we can have a conversation about that. But you're choosing to leave. I am the way that I am. I develop the way that I develop. I want to be a fucking YouTuber. I want to be a fucking content creator. I want to be a fucking voice actor. If any of these things uh, don't align with you, then this might not be the position for you, sweetie. I told her, I was like, hey, I want to live in the city. She wants to have a house in the valley. Not a very big house, just a house practical house. Valley. Yeah, I mean, which is cool. The valley's dope, man. I used to live in the valley. You know, like, when I lived with Anthony, we lived in the valley. So, and I told her, I said, that's not for me. I said, I like apartment living. I like living in a, in a, in a building where I can go to the roof. And if I felt like jumping off, I could. <laughs> I mean, that was the joke. But obviously, I want to live in somewhere where I have a view. That's it. Mm. I want to live in a fucking skyline like type apartment or shit like that because i can they're not that expensive they're like three four grand just on the rent which sounds expensive that in other sounds places. fucking expensive. sounds expensive right but think about where i live la think about how much money i could make per day mm -hmm. i just sat here and i explained to you guys how to make 500 dollars per day yeah. so really it's feasible it really is. If you're making money like that and making proper decisions when you live in a place like this and you know how it fucking works, like people are coming here to struggle because the, <laughs> because because the the upside of it, if you get lucky Super within this struggle, you are making more money than any person you know. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just it is what it is, man. Three three to four grand is not that much here. It's really not. Like when you look at the average median, like how much an educated and uneducated entrepreneur, by the way, makes in this city, you'd be like, why doesn't everybody have a high rise in LA? This is fucking crazy. But you also have to look at some of these communities and how they grew up. How many kids do they have? Is the mom, you know, sometimes you got single parents and stuff like that, just trying to make ends meet. I am a single male. I could flip around different jobs right now and make three times as much money, but I'd probably be three times as unhappy. So there are you sure? I don't, think it, I, I don't think that's possible I'll tell, where you're at right I'll, now. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you how. So just because you make more money does not, I mean, all of this is obviously contradictory to this, the same shit that I said. It all depends on your mindset too. Like depending mm -hmm. on who you are as a person. So I, I'm really just trying to hit all bases here with this conversation. So if I made six grand instead of three, like I do now, I'd be able to have a $3,000 apartment. Sure. But what, what comes with that lifestyle? What am I doing for work? What am I doing on the weekends? What am I doing with my time? You know what I mean? So yeah. obviously my, my job is probably going to take a different toll depending on what that job is. In the tech industry, $3,000 a month actually is, is, is low. Very, 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 very low. And that's in the tech space. So if you're somebody that's in the, 
that works for a tech company, you're probably making five to six grand anyway a month. And that's just tech. If you're working in advertising, on average, you're working, you're making three to four grand a month. And these are like positions that you can get in while not being educated, not having a college degree. The earning potential here is astronomical. So when you say a $3,000 apartment and somebody in, in fucking, I don't know, fucking Alabama is cringing right now. Somebody in Florida is fucking cringing right now. <laughs> it's like, okay, but keep in mind, you guys make drastically less money too. Yeah. That's important. That's a very important aspect. Not only that, when you work for some of these companies, there's always room for growth to where you do make five to six grand a month, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then most of the time when you're working for like a big company, they'll put you through some type of program that you don't have to pay for in order for you to make more money so they can promote you. So you see what I mean? Like when you really take advantage of like all the stuff that's going on here, Who who's showing up this late at night, Arrow? It was me, my bad. Knocking on the door. That's fucking weird. <laughs> when you come here and you treat this place not as a place to live, but as a place to make progress, as a place of progress, then you succeed. Some people, they come here, they try it for a little bit, they realize they're kind of failing, so then they half ass it because they want to be able to have one foot in, one foot out, because they feel like they're not succeeding, instead of doubling down and jumping in the hole, instead of mm -hmm. like, oh, uh, well, I didn't, I'm not super famous, and I've been doing this for five months now. Like, dog, <laughs> you're not moving to LA and trying to act for five months and not getting anything. Because if you move here and you're trying to, quote unquote, be an actor for five months, but you're not making films on the side, you're not trying to network with people that are making films. You're not trying to make friends with, with, with film students. You're not trying to make friends with any of these people in this industry, right? And learn it and craft it every single day with the understanding that you will never master it. You are supposed to practice your craft every single day. Like when I would come home from work, I would just pull up random monologues on the internet and I would just read them, read them out loud. That's how bad I really wanted to be a fucking actor, bro. Like every single day was a learning experience. Every single day. So when you come out here and you do that stuff and you don't stay diligent with it, you're not even going to make a living. Because mm. the goal is to make a living first. Yeah. You can be a quote unquote big actor by just making feature money. That's it. It's not that hard. Yeah, that's a. I mean, I think that's personally like, you know, I mean, that would probably be it for for most people if the dreams weren't weren't. Oh, we have to be fucking, you know, uh, who's a big actor? Uh, I guess to to your previous example, we don't have to be fucking Morgan Freeman famous or or things like that. You know what right, I mean? Right. You don't have to book. And that's where the mindset is kind of like. Yeah, well, you're shooting for the stars here, uh, and you're aiming for the moon, but you know. You secretly want to go farther, and that's sometimes, a lot of the times, to your detriment. So I think it, the mindset is good within realistic bounds. Mm -hmm. Because, like you said, you could be an actor in five months. You could, you know, you but you can't be the fucking biggest actor of all time in five months. No, definitely not. Because you, can, I mean, you, you don't have enough experience. Time. Yeah. Yeah. So... You know, it's, even two uh, years, it's very interesting. So, you know, I, I just, I, I urge people to find the thing you want to do and stick to it, man. Like just stick to it. And then you can pivot to something else later on. If you really feel like you don't like it. Yeah. You just, you just have to have the stones to do it. I started reading this new book. Actually, it's uh the five second rule. I forget who it's by. I have to pull it up in a minute. Um, the food thing. No, 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 no. Not the food thing. So it's basically, it's basically a way what? to... <laughs> this, guy's, this guy's fucking crazy. <laughs> it's basically a way to help relieve anxiety and the fear of making decisions. So essentially uh, what you by do... By the way, it's by Mel Robbins. I'm sorry. Thank you. Mel you Robbins. Off. Yes, yes. That, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. Why do you know that? 
I looked it up. Hello? Oh, okay. I, I, <laughs> so, thought, I thought you just knew that offhand. Nah, she actually, um, so I found out about her book because she was on The Breakfast Club this past week, right? And so I was like, fuck okay. it, you know what, I'll buy the book, whatever, I'm going to listen to it. So essentially what you get from the book is you have, there are five seconds before you make any decision. You have five concrete seconds. Within that five seconds, you choose to make a decision or not. And, and inaction is also an action. So if you're really Ooh. worried about something and you're trying to take a leap on it, count down from five. In that amount of time, the numbering process goes through your brain and your brain registers that a certain way as in haste. Let's make a decision. Five, four. By the time you get to three, your brain is really processing shit. We either do it or we don't do it. Two, okay, well, fuck it. Like, this is what happens if we do. This is what happens if we don't. One, and then you make your decision. It's just, it's literally that simple. It alleviates so much. Like, it, like, it's even helped me in the first, like, maybe 30, 40 pages that I've read of this book. It's already helped me not be late for work and i love being late for work like i hate being somewhere on time i hate being places early i show up when the fuck i want to show up my alarm will go off in the morning and i'll just lay there second alarm will go off third alarm blah 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 blah, blah. now the alarm will go off and it's like yeah i don't want to get up but i know i have to i'll do mm. i'll i'll count down from five four three two one fuck it let's get up boom no problem do you do that like is there any like opportunities where you do that multiple times yes i do it for everything okay. i i no, like, no no like i meant in the morning specifically <laughs> oh, like, oh, oh, oh oh just like, for getting you, up sometimes you just get myself there five. and then you think about it again <laughs> i give myself a second Sorry. five no yeah no 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 i my brain doesn't allow me to do that because then i start screaming at myself it's like funny enough okay so this is the cheesiest shit you guys are ever gonna hear me say so when I was a kid, right? When I was younger, when I was like, fuck it, we'll age it up. I'll, I'll so just so that way other people can like vibe with what I'm saying. So when I was in high school, right? And I okay. wanted to do something that that truly scared me. Like it was talk to a girl or or raise my hand and ask a teacher for something or say a joke or or do anything like that in my head. This is the craziest shit ever. It, it also really worked for doing anything. I would recite the Kamehameha wave all the time. I would, in my head, I would go, ka me ha And then after that, I'd be like, fuck, I'm ready for the ha at this point. Like, and then so by the time I got to it, I was like, fuck it. Like, whatever it is, I just fucking did it. So it's okay. kind of the same, it's kind of the same thing. So it like powers you up in a way where you're like, fuck, like, damn. Like I had all of this time to, to really like gauge all of this energy Fuck it. Okay. Might, as well, might as well do it. I get you know? it. Even if it's like for minor shit. Like when I get up in the morning and I'm brushing my teeth and then I'm like, oh, fuck, man. I got to put my pants on. I got I to gotta <laughs> do this. I got to do that. I don't know if I'll do that. Bruh, it's, that's just automatic. Definitely. It's definitely not automatic for me. I hate putting on pants. Pants are, <laughs> pants are literally the devil what? to me, bro. I, I shit you not. I, I hate putting on pants, bro. If I could go to work in sweats, I really would. I, really I mean that. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but you can though. I, I but you can. Yeah. Though. I have to dress business casual in my in my uh, line of work. You know what I mean? Like I may get away with like wearing a graphic tee every now and then if it's some something one of my bosses like, you know, I like I I have a Bob's Burger shirt because my boss Jim he really likes Bob's Burgers. So like, he's like, oh man, I lo I love that show, and then he'll want to talk about it for a little bit. But completely forgets that I'm not wearing a fucking college shirt to work. Like. <laughs> <laughs> and he can fucking care less. So, um, so essentially, you know, when I get up and I'm looking at my pants, I'm like, fuck. I, I have to do it very incremental, too, to a certain point. Just getting up sometimes. I have to be like, I have to count down from five. Picking up mm. my pants. Like, just gripping them in my hand. I have to, <laughs> I have to do a count of five, bro. I shit you. I hate this activity so fucking much. So then I'll sit on my couch, and the second I do, I'm like, five, four, three, two, one. And I put one leg in my pants, and I just sit there. <laughs> I just sit God. there defeated, bro. This is all before I even get on my phone. Like, and then I'm just like, fuck, man. Like, 
My PS5 controller is right here, bro. I could just pick it up and just, just be sick today. I could just be sick today. Sure, I don't get paid for the day, but I could just be sick. I could just sit here and play fucking video games. Fuck it. That decision I gotta get out of that habit of waking up and then uh, looking at my phone. It's a bad habit. I mean, it's... It can be good if you if you do it with a purpose. Like I get up and the first thing I do is I go check my ex's Instagram. I'm not even gonna lie to you. Like, it's, 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 <laughs> I it's, thought you were gonna say, "Yo, I get up and check my bank account every morning." Hell like, no, that, that gives that, that, that gives be so depressing. me anxiety, bro. That gives me anxiety because when I see when I see that it's not four four digits, I'm upset. When it's not three digits, <laughs> I'm upset. When it's not two digits, I'm upset. Okay. And do I? Yeah. Why would I start my day off with the maximum level so of don't... anxiety? Absolutely not. <laughs> so, so you can see if someone stole your money or not. I'm never worried about if somebody stole my money. You know why? Because I don't have any. Exactly. <laughs> what the fuck? That motherfucker gonna steal, bro? <laughs> Come on. Hey, hey, you know, I I hope my my girl girlfriend does not listen to this episode of the podcast because this is not a Patreon episode. Um, oh shit. <laughs> I know, right? Oh shit. Um, I get up, and I check my ex's Instagram, bro. I miss that girl. I'm not even gonna fucking lie to you. Like, oh. I, 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 I'm, I'm dead serious, bro. She was my best friend for a very long time. You don't just like stop caring about a person like that. You know what I mean? Like, so I get up. Yeah, I don't know. She'll, she'll be. <laughs> hey, <laughs> my uncle kind of did me wrong that one day. Oh, so yeah, I yeah, yeah. Girl said that shit. like, yeah, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. But listen, I, it's different. <laughs> it's different with her, man. For like, the majority of my life i've known this girl you know what i mean like we met when we were 14 like mm-hmm. you know what i mean so it's just like some of my other friends who have known that long i don't give a fuck about them niggas but there's just something different about her we 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 vibe on a cosmic level you know what mm-hmm. i mean at least on my end i don't know what i don't know i can't <laughs> speak for her and i can't speak for this shit that she talk about but you know what? And I'm happy in my relationship right now. Like, we chilling. We good. But, like, there's just something. This girl will always have a fucking hold on me, and it's fucking crazy. But anyway, that aside, that's the first thing I do in the morning, and I have to stop get. I have to get out of that habit. Because sometimes I know she knows I watch it, even from my alternate accounts. And she <laughs> just be, she purposely be posting shit that hurts my feelings. Because she was on a date with this one nigga, and they they were in Vegas popping bottles, doing all sorts of shit. And I said, "Fuck, man!" They had a penthouse. <laughs> I said, "I said I can't believe he fucking my girl raw." I know he fucking my girl raw, bro. This is just some bullshit. So, <laughs> anyway, this was like before me, you know, like me before me and my girl got together. Now, right? And I was yeah. like, I, and I was like, this is my in in my mind, right? This is my soulmate being penetrated raw by another nigga in a vegas in a las vegas penthouse something that i could never provide her like take her on the trip pay for her food they having lobster they having sushi they doing this they doing that boom bam bam going all over places then he raw dogs my girl in a penthouse bro like i could never afford anything like that i could never afford to take her on a trip like that so that makes me feel some type of way and I know she be posting shit like that on purpose, bro. I know she do. But you know what? These days, I just got to let it slide. I try not to do it. I look for now. The stuff that depresses me is when I go on Twitter and I see people talking about how shitty the Demon Slayer game is, but they play it constantly. Uh, so yeah. that's, that shit stresses me out. I hate you niggas. <clears throat> I hate you niggas that complain about this shit and still play it. It makes no fucking sense to me. And then motherfuckers act surprised like we didn't know this was going to... Oh. I didn't know this game was going to be like that. Yes, the fuck you did. The last six anime games came out like this. Shut the fuck up and sit the fuck down. This shit is, this shit is the most annoying, stressful shit in the world to me. So I got to stop doing that too. So now I get up in the morning and I play my little Nas X. Okay? I play my Doja Cat. Then I play Pop Smoke. In that order. Because that gets me out of the fucking house. It really does. I really be walking out the house like I'm going to shoot somebody. It took me 30 minutes to put my fucking pants on. I wish a nigga would run up on me. The mental stress I have to go through to put on <laughs> pants, bro. Don't get me started on socks. Socks are tough, too. Socks are a fucking challenge for me because I got to look for them bitches. Oh, my God. And I just be skipping breakfast. You I don't sit, have a sock drawer? I sit. 
Of course I have a fucking sock drawer, bro. That's what kind of Neanderthal do you think he is, man? Bro, just because I have a sock you? drawer doesn't mean that there are designated socks for that day in there. That doesn't mean they match either. Did you think about True. that, numbskull? I bet hey, you didn't. Man, I, I'd be wearing socks that just match the color slightly, all right? So See, if you, and this is exactly, if you give me... <laughs> this is exactly why you live the life that you live, and I live the life that I live. Because I make sure my socks match when I leave the fucking house. You ain't gonna catch me out here with mixed match socks, on, huh? Like I'm some fucking well, heathen. You won't, you won't catch me with white and black socks, but like, <laughs> if it's gray and black, I'm saying, all right, bro. You got it. That's I'm tacky as hell, up. bro. That's tacky as hell. The <laughs> fact that you don't have the discipline to look for another fucking socks. I'm not looking for another yeah. socks. Tells me all I need. Yeah, well, guess what? I'm not leaving this house with to make it on time. Don't match. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I don't give a fuck if I'm on time or not. Because if I. Arrow's if I kind leave, of a heathen. I'm not honestly, gonna lie. Because let me tell you something about living where I live. If you show up late, but you show up to rock that motherfucker wherever the fuck you go, people don't give a fuck that you showed up late. You showed up with good energy. You showed up looking good. You showed up smelling good. Absolutely not, bro. You think I'm going somewhere and don't look fucking good. Bro, I didn't have a haircut for a month. I was pissed. I was absolutely pissed that I had to leave this house with a nappy fucking haircut. That's crazy. God damn, Y'all have haircuts? Can't... You know Whoa. how expensive it is to get a motherfucking haircut? Arrow's fucking dusty, so I don't know what <laughs> That's what I'm saying, bro. I can't, I can't vibe with niggas who's doing dusty on purpose. Like You, <laughs> you, you, you won't even know I'm dusty. That's the thing. That's the, that's the yeah, crazy bro, we can look at no, you and see you're dusty. dusty There's bro. no fucking we way. Know you're dusty. No, you will not know. We can you see your bumpy know. ass hairline, bro. I can hear it. I can not. hear it in your voice right now, bro. Arrow, you wear like four shirts, and you wear the same pair of pants. Yikes. Nah, nah, man. I gotta have. See, at this point, I have nine different pairs of pants just for like specific events. Those are just specific events, not including the the ten other pairs of pants that. And these are pants. These aren't even jeans. These are like just regular schmegular slacks and shit like that. You know what I mean? Like, like not dress slacks, but like casual slacks and shit like that. That's what I have to mm. leave the house with. I have to leave the house with a fucking fit on, bro. And I'm not good at putting colors and shit together. I'm like really bad. I have to like use the Stitch Fix It app and like look for templates. And then I try to go to H&M and, 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 and Ross and shit and try to catch a deal on shit that looks like that. That's not actually that. Because that shit's expensive. <laughs> So I'd be trying to like look up like like business casual fits and stuff like that. Like I'm just trying to look somewhat nice. I gotta have a nice haircut. You know why? Because perception is everything. Perception is the thing that's going to hey, you in the red shirt. Yeah, can you come in and give this drink and say these lines? Next thing you know, you're making five hundred and fifty dollars a day. Don't talk to me about wearing mixed match socks, bro. You can't you But can't, like but like you can't. you you trying to make a improbable situation probable. When you should probably just, you know, wing it. Because those situations come when you fuck? wing it. Nah, not in this city. They See, this yeah. is, you can tell this, this is, is a man this... who wears mismatched socks. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. You got the mixed match mentality. And that's you your know, fucking no, problem, you're, you're, bro. You're See, trying to a... make something See... happen on purpose. Like, you're trying to make a, no, a situation like that happen on purpose. Nipsey Hussle says, when operation meets preparation matches your dedication bro that's automatic success right there when you were ready for an event when you were ready for something that you didn't expect that you didn't know what happened like if you were prepared to look like you work for a fortune 500 company right somebody's gonna mm -hmm. believe the perception that you work for a fortune 500 company they're going to treat you as if you work for a fortune 500 company that is the perception that people just have it's everything it's literally the three seconds before somebody meets you so if you're off by any means at all before someone even speaks to you bruh you probably fumbled the bag and didn't even know it so like it's so like what happens if you are part of that said company right and you just show them you don't look the part like you don't look the part but you literally through speaking your first sentence not even anything else your first sentence and they're like oh this guy's real shit. So this is this is like how he I knows know, what he's talking this about. This is how I know I need to educate you on this. So if you work for a Fortune 500 company, what do you think the dress code is? Well, I, I don't work for that's that what, company. That's why, I'm asking, that's why, that's why I'm asking you. That's what I'm asking you. If you work for a okay. company that that revenues multiple millions of dollars a year, what do you think you wear to work every single day? Just take a guess. Uh, 
fucking suit and tie. Right. Right. Exactly. And so <laughs> uh, that's at the extreme. You're wearing a suit and tie every day. At the lower levels, what do you think you're wearing? Well, I literally wore anything. So. That, uh, well, well, hey. well, well, hold on. Well. Let me ask you a question. This is a Fortune 500 business. What do you, Arrow, think you would mm -hmm. wear to a job like that? Oh, like, shit. <laughs> so you could tell. You see what uh, I mean? So you need to show up at least business casual. Business casual yeah. as in a shirt with a collar, clean, pressed. You have some pants that either match or go well with what you're looking at. Your shoes can't be, you know, they can't. Because people look you at your shoes, bro. can't be wearing no bro. Nikes. You can't be wearing. All right, so, and if you are wearing Nikes, the this, motherfuckers better be fresh, bro. Like, yeah, they got to be Because this, cause this happened to me, right? I, as you know, I used to work at FedEx, right? I was a package handler, right? Okay. The job interview said in red, in red text color, business casual. I'm mm -hmm. like, all right, cool. Let me just let me get myself some, you know, some beige sla um, slacks. You better not have said and so. then, oh, okay. I thought he was about to say socks, and I was about to go not a menace again. <laughs> The whole place, let, me, let, let, let me let me look nice shirt tucked in you know i got everything and then i come in i sit down i'm the first one there okay right? now let me stop you there okay so mm -hmm. the position you were going for what was it i was going for i was just like doing an interview that was just no, the no, no, interview no, that's part. not what i asked you that's not what i asked you what mm -hmm. was the title of the position that you were going for at fedex i think it was i think Is it, it was, operations clerk i'm not sure what the fuck? So essentially, what would your job be? Let me ask you that. If what was I going there for? Yes. What would the Bruh. position that you were working? <laughs> what was your? What would your duties be? What was the be? title of what it? What was the title? What was your job? Package what, handler. Right. So, do you think you need to wear a suit and tie to be a package handler? No, you do not. Right. But if you're the if you're the uh, assistant to the vice president of FedEx marketing division what the fuck are you wearing to work business casual thank you thank you but like but like they told no that okay so that was just me right i was the first one there and everything right i was wearing business casual yes but literally everyone else that came through was not and okay. everyone else and me got the job right so you know why because why? you're a package handler Package, you see what I mean? Package handler, which means at that point, we need anybody to move <laughs> these packages. Okay, we're not looking for a specific skill set in people. We need you to pick up a box and move it over mm -hmm. here. Move that mm -hmm. box. And you're not going to be doing that in business casual. I'll tell doing, you that. Not only are you I not tried be that doing shit. That. Oh my God. Not that only shit, I, bro, I did it in a suit <laughs> once. Okay, it's, it's fucking crazy. Okay, so not only That's, do you yeah. not you need that much experience. Suit, yeah, I mean, really think of it. Yeah, bro, that was that was for this UCLA event I did. Um, I have to tell you that story off air. That's terrible. Yeah, I got to tell yeah. you that story off air, man. That shit was wild. Uh, so, your job description of the position that you were having was grunt work. Right? Would mm -hmm. you consider that grunt work? Yes. Right. So you're not middle level. You're not upper level. So you don't need to dress business casual for the job. You do need to, however, put your best foot forward and dress for the job interview. Think of it when you're living where I live, everywhere you go with people that you don't know is a potential job interview. You see what I mean? Perception is everything. You come out of the house in sweats and your house shoes and shit like that. You got your slip-ons, all this other shit. You must be just going to the grocery store. You must be going to just just do something because ain't no ain't no way you going out and about in a professional environment with your sweats on, unless you own some shit. That's it. I've gone to the mall in sweats before, but that's because I'm not there to do nothing. I'm not having any social interactions at the mall whatsoever. I'm there to pick up my Shake Shack and leave. Okay. That's what the fuck I'm so, doing. So, like, what what happens if they need a guy to walk in the background as an average fucking person? They provide what? you... They Okay. So, now you're trying to confuse two different things. You're confusing a job interview and, a, and an occupation with a mm -hmm. specific scenario on a specific set. So, what happens is when they send out the breakdown for the scene that you're going to be on, right? And say mm -hmm. they need business casual. 
They give you examples of what to Google to <laughs> expect wearing business casual. Please bring collared, solid colored, solid, uh, solid colored uh, shirt with a collar. No logos. These kind of pants. These kind of shoes. No gloves. No hats. We hired you because we're looking for somebody in this specific range. We saw your picture on the casting site. You have facial hair. They have to check. Hey, Arrow, uh, we're just calling. Do you still have facial hair? You say yes or no. And they'll let you know if they need you or not. They'll send you the breakdown of what you're supposed to wear. If you show up to set and you're not wearing the proper stuff, either A, they will send you home unpaid for the day, unfucked, I promise you, they will send you home 7 o'clock in the morning so you have to drive your funky ass back home and find another job. Sounds like FedEx. Yeah, well, I guess so. Yeah, if you're not wearing the right attire, you will go home. Or they will send you to wardrobe where they will give you a little ticket that says you are borrowing clothes. And they will give you set designed clothes, costumes to wear. Okay? That's how that works. You do not get... It's a uniform. Think of it as a uniform. When you show up to mm. FedEx, they give you an assigned uniform. When you show up to UPS, <laughs> they give you a uniform when you're delivering shit. When you show up to mm. Amazon Flex, Amazon Delivery, you wear that Amazon logo. You are a representative. As long as you're wearing that shirt, as long as you're wearing that uniform, when you are out and about in public, you are saying, hey, I work for this company. I represent this company. So you need to behave as such because perception is everything. It just is. It just is. And that's just not the movie business either. That's trying to get a job. That's trying to reach an opportunity that you didn't know. I've had people stop me before and ask me, like, you know, when I was wearing, like, my, my really good fits. And this is when my ex worked over in Bel Air. And, like, all the time I would go and pick her up. So we would just go and hang out. I'd be wearing something real nice, you know, just. Mm -hmm. And I'm built, I'm, you know, I'm built nice for, for you know, a guy that's only 5'8". You know, I look like I rock some shit. Like I had the pecs going and I had this really nice green sweater on, bro, with these blue jeans and my, uh, what, what the fuck was I wearing? I think I was wearing, uh, like black Adidas or something. Man, I was looking, uh, man, the fit was going crazy. I had my hair cut and everything. And this lady comes up and she's like, oh, hi, do you work for such and such? Because I looked approachable. You don't just move in a, in a rich looking area, not looking good not smelling good people want to approach you people want to ask you oh do you work for this building such and such no but my at the time you know we were you know trying to go somewhere i was like no but my fiance does she works in this building oh okay well you know um we were just actually looking for people for you know some photo work that we're doing could you you know come up and help us and things like that it should only be like 10 minutes i was like yeah sure of course i'll take some photos with you guys boom next thing you know I'm taking these photos thinking I'm a fucking model. I'm like, damn, you mean to tell me an average nigga like me with a f fresh hairline just suddenly like might stumble into a modeling gig? And the lady was like, thank you so much for helping us. Let me, let me go talk to my manager real quick. I was like, all right, yeah, for sure, for sure. She comes out and she hands me 200 bucks. I don't even know this bitch. And I'm like, damn, like. Best believe that shit would not have happened if your boy had a raggedy fucking haircut, wearing my busted ass fucking Nikes that I had with my fucking sweatpants on. Ain't no fucking way, bro. Ain't no fucking way. I've gotten, that's how I got my job in M&A. When I used to work at GameStop, I used to always have a, have a fit, bro. I used to always have the hairline. I used to have, you know, a nice fitted shirt, like something that was actually my size, nothing that was too big, nothing that was too small. And I remember this dude came in here and he was like, oh, so you, can you tell me about these Wii games for my son and my daughter and blah, 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 blah. Man, we chop it up for like 20, 30 minutes. And he tells me, uh, do you want a job? I'm like, well, what? I, I work. That is so, what? Yeah, I was like, I, I work for GameStop. Like, is it, I'm thinking it's a job related. I'm thinking it's like game related, right? I'm thinking this guy's like, you know, he's got to work at like Activision or Blizzard or or this company or that company. Damn, what if he works for Naughty Dog? I'm thinking I'm about to get on. Like, I'm about to be a game <laughs> producer, right? I'm thinking I'm really about to do something. He goes, no, it's, um, long story short, you know, TLDR. He tells me it's mergers and acquisitions. I was like, I don't know anything about that. He's like, here's my card. Come into my office on Monday. It's in, it's in Beverly Hills. I'm like, all right, cool. I got to take the bus to go wherever I want. 
you know i didn't have a car at the time so i had to travel mm -hmm. from long beach which is 40 miles away mind you it takes me two hours to commute to beverly hills and i end up going there he teaches me about m a he teaches me how mergers and acquisitions work with these fortune 500 companies and these fortune 100 companies the difference between a fortune 100 and a and a fortune 500 is vastly different like human like fortune 500 companies are these like you know like walmart target level like the average like, everyday like, like you know what i mean like average chain stores and stuff like that mm -hmm. fortune 100 companies are above banks like what? and like as far as like the, <laughs> the money that they bring in we're talking like ad agencies we're talking like like people who manufacture car parts we're talking people who manufacture like did you know there are companies that manufacture just the material to make door handles so they huh? they take metals and they compo compound those or however the fuck it works and they send those parts to car manufacturers so they can melt it down and make it malleable to build on cars. There's entire companies that sell just the plastic parts to respirators. That's their entire business. And they're Fortune 100 companies making billions of dollars a year that we've never even heard of. Oh, so, fuck. so these companies, so essentially what my job was, we worked for these billion dollar buyers who wanted to buy million dollar companies and acquire them and then they didn't even want to buy the companies to shut them down they wanted to buy the companies to leave them alone just to buy it just to own it just to just to, oh just because i can i got a billion dollars they want to sell their company for 550 million it's nothing light work light work all you got to do is kick me back x amount of dollars i own majority of the company but you guys can still own operate and maneuver we don't have to fire nobody but what 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 it's called it's called a liquidity event so essentially what it is is a billionaire buys a millionaire's company right or they buy mm -hmm. out the stockholders the shareholders whatever right a privately owned company and so what they do is they say hey you can run your company the same way you've been running it you don't have to change nothing but what i now allow what i now allow you to do is you're now allowed to reach into my pocket and say, hey, Jay, um, we're doing some research and development for these new car parts or for these new respirator parts or whatever. We need $100 million for research and development. Sure, no problem. Boom, 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 boom. Make sure to pay me back by the end of the year. That's it. All these guys are is a endless piggy bank for these Fortune 500 companies. But they own them. They take majority of the money when it comes back. All of that money, they get back. They get that shit. So I was do mm. I ended up getting this job and I worked there for five years while working two other jobs. Still trying to work at GameStop, by the way. And I worked yeah. that job on commission. I didn't make no money. I was picking up, making cold calls every single day. Hundreds of phone calls a day. Trying to speak to executives, trying to speak to vice presidents and presidents. Hey, are you interested in selling your company? Boom. Hey, are you interested in selling your company? And then when I learned, hi, I represent Jay Jordan of the Jordan Company. Uh, he would like to offer you a liquidity event. Who do I speak to in such and such and such and such? And then I learned even more. Hi, my name is Jay Jordan. I call as the billionaire. And that was the first time I met my first fucking billionaire. And the first lesson he taught me was as a personal, like just straight from me to him if i operate my company by saying i don't want anybody to have more than 10 percent of my income per income source no, i don't want anything over that nothing should exceed exceed over 10 percent of my income so i was so if i own 10 businesses right okay. and they all pay me a million dollars a year i'm making 10 million dollars a year right yep if one of them were to go away i lose a million right okay so essentially i should make that one million dollars that they pay me only 10 percent of my total income so you have the 10 companies so if i lose one i'm still making nine million dollars a year in comparison to only having five million dollars and these people having to give me a million dollars each right 
or 10, 10 okay. companies paying me 500,000. Because if I lose 500,000, that's now like, oh shit, like I lose a lot. I'm losing a lot. I'm losing a lot of money here. I can't afford to lose $500,000. I only got 5 million. Sure, it's like, I'm still at 4.5 per year, but man, I, I'm used to living a $5 million lifestyle, man. Not this 4.5 ghetto shit. Ooh. Oh no! I gotta shop at Target. I can't even imagine someone saying four point five million is ghetto. That is verbatim what he told me. He said that is verbatim what he told me. He said if I had to lose one million dollars per year, that would actually be disgusting to me. And keep in mind, this is a older white man calling calling something where he was like, first of all, a million dollars at in his early career was a lot of money. A million dollars to him. At that point in time, he was like, I could lose a million dollars right now and not even give a fuck. And I'm just like, what? that's crazy. And he said, because this company only pays me the million dollars a year that I asked for, but they make hundreds of millions off of me every year. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, why is that? He's like, it's about relationships. It's about perception. If you seem like a good guy, when it comes to time to fuck something, Oh, you doing the fucking and they're volunteering. <laughs> because honestly, if, if, if a guy made you, right, if a guy made your company $10 million a year and he said, you only have to pay me one. Oh, shit, man, that's all good. Yeah, absolutely. And for 20 fucking years, you do that, right? 20 years. Then he goes. You now have 20 million. Yep. Yeah, then he goes, all right, so let me look at this report here. Um, so over the last 20 years, I made. 20 million dollars right and i brought you guys 200 million dollars in profit over the last 20 years right and they're like yeah okay. yeah you've been great to us yeah you allow us to do all of this that and the other thing yeah i'm gonna go ahead and sell my 51 percent of the company <laughs> and they go what what, what what wait 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 why because your company because of me is now valued at over 220 million dollars just from me being responsible for your company. So if I wanted to sell it, they do what's called the EBITDA, which is earnings before taxes, basically, right? So this is how much the company makes. This is how much the company is expected to make in five years. I can now sell this company $500 million if I wanted to. I can sell it to any of my friends, any of my billion dollar buyers, and they'll pay me just for my part of the company. And so everybody's looking around like, fuck, like that's crazy. So now I sell that company and I make way more back off of all of that other, because now we've had a contract. Over a certain amount of time, you've been making so much money off of me, you have to give me a percent of that. But I didn't, I didn't, I told you you didn't have to pay it yet. You have to pay it when the certain circumstance comes up. Turns out the fine print, that circumstance is when I sell the company, you have to pay me back all that money you borrowed from me. You Damn. Li you liquidate the entire company. It's, it's monopoly backwards, baby. Oh, you can't, you can't, oh, you can't afford to pay me? The company doesn't have that much money? Well, that's definitely not true. I'm seeing the EBITDA right here. We made $225 million last year. In profit. <clears throat> that's just plus. We were already making $100 million below that. You, just, you see what I mean? Like, this is how it works. And so he told me, he's like, never let anything be more than 10% of your income. Never. That's how billion-dollar companies operate. Why would I not operate my life the same way? Mm. perception is everything arrow that's why i tell mm. you this story perception is everything because when you move differently and you look differently you act differently people treat you differently it's just that simple Damn. but anyway that's the life lesson for today i didn't realize i could talk for an hour and 45 minutes on this <laughs> that wasn't my intention wow. at all yeah we didn't even get to like the other stuff that we wanted to talk about but you know whatever Honestly, I don't even think they're. That was that was pretty good. Well, I mean, hey. I think we talked about the main thing. And that was it. And I'm <laughs> yeah, pretty much yeah. So, you know, you just that's why I say Arrow. Like, people in other states couldn't even fucking comprehend what it's like to live where I live. So when I complain about my issues and people are like, Psh, man, I, I, if I had three thousand dollars a month in such and such and such and such place or Tennessee or. Kansas or wherever the fuck these motherfuckers are from. 
damn, I'd be eating good. I'm sure you would. Yeah, it, you would be because it's yeah, a different place. Yeah, I'm sure you would. <laughs> <laughs> You're fucking crazy. <laughs> I wish a nigga would tell me his struggle is worse than my kid, motherfucker. Yeah, right. <laughs> Talk about there's starving kids in Africa. I'm starving here. That's worse. What are you talking about? I'm watching other <laughs> niggas. You know what the difference is between a starving kid in Africa and a starving kid here? I gotta watch a motherfucker eat on social media. I gotta watch <laughs> other people eat. You don't think that shit's... Now I got a mental health problem. That motherfucker is just hungry. <laughs> okay? I got depression. I gotta take pills. I gotta do all this other shit. And I'm hungry. <laughs> Come on, man. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> people try to equate struggle that shit is wild to me so but anyway that's pretty much it thank you guys for listening uh, uh plank you got anything else you want to add man any words of wisdom oh wow uh what well, actually you know what let me ask you a question okay did you or what did you learn from today's podcast or today's like interaction really like what is something that you got out of it Ooh, I really did like the five second, uh, five second rule mm. when you were talking about that book. I really enjoyed that. I mean, granted, the whole thing. I I really enjoyed hearing uh, your perspective, but that that specifically, I didn't. I never really thought about it that way. Like, I never like sometimes. Uh, I try to think I'm very rational, mm -hmm. but then I go around and I make irrational fucking decisions. <laughs> like I'll sit, like I'll wake up, look at my phone for three hours, and be like, "Oh, where'd the time go?" You know exactly where the fuck it went. <laughs> and I knew exactly where it went. Right. So, uh, I think it's it's good. Kind of playing your game like a telltale game. Mm -hmm. It's kind of... <laughs> <laughs> uh, playing it like that is... Uh, it'll probably be better for me. Because you... I think you get like 5-10 seconds when you're, when you're playing that game. So. Yeah, you do. You really do. Yeah, so I feel like, it'll oh, probably help me with decisions. Bro. Quick time events. I notice when I when I take certain actions, I perform better. So I'll probably take more time to think about those. Yeah, man. I mean, honestly, and we could talk about this next on the next podcast. If you or on your, the Patreon only, or Smile? on the Patreon only, yeah, yeah, yeah. Patreon only might might get a little raw. Actually, uh, if you treat your life like a video game, uh, your life actually will be very simplistic. But it'll also be just as complicated as real life, so that's kind of not much of a life hack. I mean, it is for certain people, uh, and I explained this to Avatar Yaya uh, one year, and I was saying sometimes you have to do what you have to to do what you want, and mm. uh, which is a tough saying, because if you do enough side quests in your life, you will be ready for main quest. Because sometimes yeah. you'll take on a main quest that's like, damn, I really want to do this one specific thing or get this thing accomplished. But you don't have. But you getting your ass beat. But you, get you getting your ass, your ass beat by the ogre, and you just sitting there like, God the damn. Yeah, and and sometimes you fuck up on side quests and didn't realize you did, because when you go try to accomplish the main quest and you're not prepared for it, you ass backwards, bro. So sometimes yeah. you really gotta knock out these side quests all the time. Like you gotta uh, you gotta fuck some fat bitches before you reach a dime piece. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. Man. Yeah, honestly, if you're if you're used to fucking, I mean, first of all, if you're just used to fucking, like, <laughs> I, that's another thing I realize as as I'm getting older. When you be fucking, it's really like, well, as a man, for me in particular, I be fucking just for fun. Like, I don't even I don't even like the nut part of it. I try to prolong that as much as possible. I love watching my girl come. Like, it's great. Like, I fucking love that shit. That shit is thrilling to me because it's a challenge. Because the per the the perception on the internet and social media and everywhere is that men don't make women come, right? That's the perception. Oh yeah, they're very. There's a lot of a lot of people say men would be oh. very selfish. Right, better. right, right. Exactly. So as a man, I see that as a challenge. Now, first of all, I don't know about y'all, but I was blessed with a BBC gene. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Amen. Okay. Okay. Nice flex, bro. Hey, listen. At, as some people. You know what? It's just that as the know, people as the people who tweeted me this week who found my OnlyFans account, they 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 can attest. Okay. Wait, what? They can attest. Shut up, bro. You knew I was throwing it back on the OnlyFans, bro. I needed I needed that extra source of income. I didn't I mean? even know you were. People were tweeting you on Twitter. Yeah, about yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. 
actually, I got I gotta tell you on the Patreon exclusive episode, man. This is this is why <laughs> I'll tell you who found who found my fucking OnlyFans, bro. It's crazy. Um, I mean, it's not surprising, but you know. <laughs> on this episode, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be fucking crazy. So, anyway, um, I take it as a challenge. Like, damn, okay, like, I like to satisfy my girl to a point where she don't want it no more. I'd be like, hold up, I'm not done eating the coochie. Hold up, hold up, what you what you running for? But I mean, I've always, I've always just like given, given my ladies fellatio. That's just something I like to do. That's just me. Personally. Anti DJ Khaled propaganda. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's it's crazy because I also have this mindset. So I think other men have this mindset. When it turns out, that's actually not true. One of my homegirls was fucking this dude, and I was trying to tell her he ain't shit. And she was like, yeah, the only thing is he doesn't eat pussy. I'm like, what type of grown-ass man doesn't eat pussy? That's like saying, oh, I don't like to drink water or I don't like vegetables. What the fuck is that? What? What kind of five-year-old? He probably thinks you got cooties too. And she was like, oh, my God, that's so funny because he thinks cooties are real. I was like, bitch, you, you're fucking kidding me. There's no way he's a grown-ass <laughs> man thinking. There's no way. this is. A, he's 35 and <laughs> thinks cooties are real. you yeah. gotta be. You got to be fucking kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> Actual man, child. I've been out of middle school, bro. Yeah, it's okay. This shit is yeah, grow up, up. man. They don't. Not only that, if you really did believe in cooties, you know they got a shot for it, bro. It's okay. All right. It's nice okay. little tracker in you, yeah, yes, sir. That's it. Oh, by the way, guys, I'm <laughs> next week. I'm actually scheduling my first vaccine shot, so I'm I'm a little oh, nervous okay. about it, man. Yeah, I was uh I was trying to prolong that, but you know we can talk about that on the on the, on the Patreon. You know, you know, you know. By the way, uh, if you guys aren't, if you can't tell, we have Patreon exclusive episodes, so you guys can go to <laughs> patreon.com slash canon culture. What is it? Canon culture oh, pod? It's a uh, canon culture. It's, it's just patreon.com slash canon culture yes, with sir. one N and not two. Yes, sir. So I, I, you know what? I would like to say, by the way, give a round of applause. Thank you to the producer Plank. Uh, he's really been holding it down, man. Uh, really, honestly, one of the only people I can rely on for this podcast. And so we go take it to the moon, baby. <laughs> and arrow don't forget about arrow i don't, don't know why somehow I'm, I'm, I'm this guy not, is more I'm consistent not. on our podcast than our actual host <laughs> this is crazy <laughs> yeah so like i'm not gonna like because um the last time i missed it because I, I wasn't able to tell the uh, jay that i was i was gonna miss it the last time um, Bro, why is Arrow to... being punctual on not his <laughs> podcast? <laughs> not what is going on here? He's not on any of the marketing material. He's not in anything. <laughs> like, I mean, when he's on the episodes, I link him, of course. I link his his YouTube channel and everything else like that. But why is it that this man has more consistency than the people I'm trying to pay on this fucking podcast? Make it make <laughs> sense, please, because it's not mathing up to me. The math is not mathing, bro. <laughs> uh, I'm so man. confused. <laughs> oh, man. But, yo. I just want to say thank you guys so much for listening. This has been a great episode. I, I really got some shit off my chest, man. I really feel it. I, I felt good about this episode. Uh, if you guys enjoyed it, make sure to tweet us. Let us know on social media. Make sure to share us on TikTok, your your Instagrams, all of that stuff. Uh, the podcast is once again available on Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, all the places you can find podcasts. Uh, we also, once again, we have that Patreon exclusive. So you guys can get that at patreon.com slash culture with one N. And uh, that's pretty much it. Anything else to add, guys? Uh, thank you, Arrow, for being here. I don't, yes, sir. I don't know why somehow you being here has helped me out a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm always happy to be here when talking about shit like this. This I is eye-opening situations. You know? this, this man showed up. And Finally, even... Arrow will get some drip. Yeah. yeah. Finally, Honestly. stop dressing like a bum. Please, bow. please. You know what? Arrow really needs to start a Patreon just for his fucking sock fund so he can actually get some matching fucking socks, bro. I, I can't take it. But anyway, Go fund me for socks. We want to say thank you guys for listening. This has been the Canon Culture Podcast. We'll see you next time. Make sure to keep it canon.